Hi, my name is Ivan and welcome to the RV Cooking Show, a place where I can share with you my passion for RVing and my love for recreating healthy, easy, regional food specialties from all across the country right here in my RV kitchen. Today we're going to talk about a little town called Desert Hot Springs, California, just outside of Palm Springs, and I'm going to show you how to make an occasion dish, pork arista. Now I call pork arista an occasion dish because most of the prep work is done the night before. So on the day of your occasion, say New Year's Day, birthdays, anniversaries, all you have to do is put the pork in the oven and make the side dishes to go with it. It really is delicious. But first let me tell you a little bit about Desert Hot Springs. As you pull into Desert Hot Springs, on your right you'll see a road called Sky Valley Road. If you turn right down Sky Valley Road, you'll find at least half a dozen RV parks and resorts that offer hot tubs, baths, and swimming pools full of this hot mineral water that doesn't smell at all because, of course, it's non-sulfuric. In Desert Hot Springs, you can take off on a little day trip to the Joshua Tree National Park, which in itself is just fabulous, and stop in Yucca Valley at the Water Canyon Coffee Company for a great cup of espresso. Just outside of Desert Hot Springs is the Coachella Valley Preserve. The Coachella Valley Preserve was put together to save an endangered species of lizard called the Fringe Toad Lizard. They've got over 20 miles of hiking trails, and they have real live oasises. Hike about a mile in and you'll come across a fabulous oasis with tall, tall fan palm trees and a beautiful body of water that sports another endangered species, the pupfish. Head on into Palm Desert and you can take part in the weekends in College of the Desert Flea Market. It's a huge flea market and it's really good. Palm Desert has great restaurants and amazing grocery stores. In fact, it's the only place that I've ever been to a grocery store where I pulled into the lot and a parking attendant came out to help me find a parking spot and park my car. Really very interesting. Well, make sure that you make reservations if you're going to travel to Desert Hot Springs in the winter. It's a very popular place. And as you can imagine, in the summer, it is wicked hot. In fact, the Coachella Valley Preserve is closed in July and August, so make plans accordingly. Well, I think we're ready to make our pork arista, so let me show you how we're going to do this, and it'll be a delicious, in my case, New Year's dinner. We're now ready to prepare our pork loin to make it pork arista. What we're gonna need for this dish is a pork loin. Now, this is a boneless pork loin. It's about a pound and a half. I'm going to use two tablespoons of fresh, finely chopped rosemary, two tablespoons of fresh, finely chopped thyme, a quarter cup of olive oil, about one and one half tablespoons of kosher salt, about four tablespoons of minced garlic, a couple grinds of fresh ground pepper, then we're going to let it marinate overnight. So let me show you how we do it, and we'll take it from there. This is fresh rosemary. If you don't grow this in your garden, you can pick this up at your produce section of your grocery store. I've got quite a bit chopped here already, but I want to show you how to take it off the stem and how to chop it finely. Rosemary typically has a woody stem, so we don't want to put that in our dish. It wouldn't taste very good. So what we do with our rosemary to strip it from the stem is we're going to hold it at the top, and then we're going to just pull the leaves backwards right off the stem, just like this. We're going to finely chop it with our chef's knife. The way that we do this is we put the tip of our knife down on our cutting board, all four of our fingers on top of the knife, and we're going to rock back and forth. The other herb that we're going to finely chop is thyme. Again, this comes from my garden, but you can find this in the produce section of any grocery store. And it's kind of the same story. We don't want to eat the woody stem. We just want the delicious tender leaves. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold it on the stem and we're just going to pull the leaves off backwards, just like this. We've got everything else prepared. We're ready to put the marinade together. So in our little blue bowl, we are going to put our two tablespoons of finely chopped fresh rosemary 
are two tablespoons of finely chopped thyme. Remember, these are fresh, not dried. We're going to put in our one and a half tablespoons of kosher salt. We've got about four tablespoons of minced garlic from my little chopper. A grind or two of fresh black pepper. And a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil right on top. Okay, great. I'm going to mix this all together and this is going to create our herb marinade. It smells so good already. We're going to set this aside and we're going to begin to prepare our pork loin. I like to use a boneless pork loin. This is about a pound and a half, but certainly you can use a standing pork roast with bones or ribs in it. Um, what we need to do before we put the marinade on our pork loin is we need to trim it of any excess fat and any excess silver skin that might be on the loin. Now we're ready to put our garlic and herb marinade on our pork loin. And what I've done to prepare for this is I've laid out a very long piece of plastic wrap. And that's what we're going to use to wrap our pork loin up in so we can put it in our refrigerator overnight. Pour it all out on top of our trimmed boneless pork loin. Okay, and then you're just going to make sure that nearly every piece of the pork roast comes in contact with this really good garlic and herb mixture. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pick this up and we're going to put it on our plastic wrap. Okay, here we go. Mm, mm, mm. With this delicious marinade mixture on our pork loin, we've got it sitting on some clear plastic wrap. And what we're going to do is we're going to wrap up our pork loin really nice and tight, just like that. Ah. This is going to be great. What we're going to do is we're going to put this on a plate, put it in our refrigerator, and tomorrow we're going to cook dinner. Well, it's been about 40 minutes, and I think our pork arista is done. But there's only one sure way for me to really know, and that's using my Instant Read meat thermometer. I like an instant read meat thermometer because typically when I bake in my oven or in my toaster oven, I don't have a lot of clearance to leave a thermometer in. Put it right in the center of your meat. Let's see how that looks. Oh, it's perfect. Let's take our meat thermometer out. And the last step before we're ready to carve our pork arista is to cover it with a piece of foil and let it rest so the juices in the meat redistribute throughout the whole piece of pork loin. And it will be really good if you could only smell it. You'd want to come over for dinner tonight. Our pork arista has rested for about five minutes and I think it's ready to carve. This feels nice and tender. It's going to be great. Now remember, if your pork roast is a little pink inside, that's perfectly fine. As long as you've made sure it got up to the temperature of 160 degrees, pink is the way to go. I'm going to serve this pork arista on a bed of whole wheat couscous made with some low-fat chicken broth and olive oil and whatever vegetable that I found fresh at my farmer's market that particular week. You can find the recipe for pork arista or any other dish that we've made on the RV Cooking Show on our website, www.rvcookingshow.com. That'll do it for us today. Thanks for stopping by the RV Cooking Show. We wish you a very happy new year, and we'll see you again right here on the RV Cooking Show.